Today we're gonna look at the hero we need. Your champion is amazing, your spells not so much. We start with Mark of a Champion and Mark of an Exile. So our champion has 50% higher stats, attack and health. But our spells cost plus one ember. This is gonna be a rough one. Uh, I just hope we roll a powerful champion and can carry us like Penumbra for example. Or maybe even Primordium, Wildenton. There are a few. Homebreaker Prince perhaps. <coughs> End up with Tethys. Maybe I go with the spells cost less route and make my damage spells free anyways. I guess that would technically work. Well, we'll see. Let's jump in. We have Echo Right. Ooh, that one still has pretty decent stats, so the marks are still useful. But it's gonna be a bit harder. At least most of these spells are zero. Well, these spells are zero cost by base. So they're still pretty playable. But this might be rough, especially because it's gonna be rough to build candy. But we'll see. We have Echo Infusion, Hello Drippings, and Soul Crushing Guild as our starter cards. We fight Zap Seraph. Uh, we also have Daedalus with Damage Shield on the Bombs and Arcus with Rally and Incant Dark Shards. Our secondary clan is Exiled Remnant. Kinda would have preferred Traditional Remnant. Uh, yeah. Traditional Remnant here, but. I guess we can do something with these primitive modes. Let's take a look at our starting artifact. Well, improved firebox gives us the ability to play some spells. I would have liked the check strips as well, but I feel like we really want to go with the extra energy at the start. Let's take the 100 gold and find a champion path. Hey puppets, welcome. I might need a little bit of luck to deal with this challenge. We already have Hello Drippings as a consume spell. So... Shellsmith is a possibility. But I think I want to go with Repeater. I haven't played Shellsmith yet. It's the thing. But it's very hard to abuse edge triggers when all our spells are more expensive. Uh, we will have trouble doing things like return soul combos and stuff. But what we can do is play single powerful consume spells and hope that we get a lot of benefit out of that. Uh, the hello drippings are not ideal for this purpose, but hopefully we can find something better. Also funny note, hello drippings is now almost strictly worse than wax and spike. <laughs> no, it's not. It doesn't apply burnout to non-burnout units, so there can be there can definitely be an advantage. Do we take the damage from this challenge? I think so. I think we need the gold to get started. To get started building a working deck. So we have to take some damage. We do have some echo breaks. Could set up on the top, play three echo breaks, get rid of these guys. Hopefully find a train steward next to put down block the hits from the next guy so they don't kill Echo Right. I could also set up Echo Right on the bottom. It's not much nicer there though. Jack strips would have been very nice for this challenge. But the firebox helped out quite a bit as well. Most of all it allowed us to build some candy on this floor. Yeah, this sucks. 
I guess I'll lace the collector because I really want that gold. We only take three to these guys. But the next wave, hmm. We almost have lethal on the Apprentice of Light with just Echo Ride if we put something in front here. But it's only almost lethal and we have no way of making it actual lethal. We can't even deal damage to this Apprentice of Light because the Train Seward would die to both of these. So I think what, I go, what I'll go for here is just a buff on Echo Ride so we have an easier time with the boss. Uh, I think I want to keep preventing damage on the top. We could reform our trade steward again. Or we could put down a new one so we don't have to deal with them on the rain next turn. We definitely want a candy on the top. But this trade steward fights a round or two against the boss. Giving us some damage right now. All in all, this is not going too bad. 38, 25, you deal 5 each hit, we have 4 hits, that's uh, enough if we take out the backliner. There we go. We need good units. And I get an offered bog fly. These are not the consume spells I'm looking for. Well, shelter might be. Shelter might be good. With Echo Right. But I feel like I need something more powerful. I'll take a bog fly. I'll take a draft. <coughs> hmm. Well. Reforming is expensive, but it can still easily be worth it. <sighs> Think we go left. Think we want the Merchant of Steel. Endless, huh? Big sludge. Yeah, that is gonna be our carry. Wait, we can just straight up give their harvest to someone else? Just straight up like that? Sure, they gain one capacity consumption, but we could put that on a bog fly, for example. There are a few options with this. Definitely pick that big guy. That's gonna be important. Whether we use their essence or whether we use the big sludge itself, we'll see about that. <coughs> hmm. Now we need to think how we make that work. Big sludge needs some harvest triggers. And if we put Echo Ride and Big Sludge on the same floor. The harvest triggers need to come from the enemies because we can't put any more friendly units there until we get some additional capacity that is. If we put the big sludge on a bog fly, it's no longer a priority unit, so we would have to find the bog fly first, but it will be more powerful once we do. Sadly, there's no way to help with that right now. So I feel like we don't put a big sludge in a bog fly. Another option would be to put a draft in a big sludge. Giving the big sludge multi-strike, but also burn out one. I don't think that's great. We don't want the big sludge to die and come back again over and over. Because that means we lose the rage every time. 
So I feel like we have to find another solution. We have to find another unit that synergizes with Big Sludge. I'm gonna buy this for sure. And I feel like I should buy this as well. And then I'm gonna leave because I don't know yet what to quite do. This value stone could be very useful. Makes one of these two cost spells actually free. I'm gonna put that on a primitive mold for now. Whew, our next the divine temple is pretty far away. That can be annoying because we will have to be able to deal with the enemies for a while before we get the ability to actually fuse the units. But it also means we get to see all the units before we actually have to make a decision. So pros and cons there. Um, if we set up on the bottom floor, we have no way of getting to the Disciple Foot Soldier right now. How do you... Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a lot of damage. Uh... Hmm. I wonder. I don't think we can do that. I think our setup looks something like this, honestly. And then try to use the draft reformed on the big sludge floor. That is gonna be our goal here. Uh, I feel like we should have candies available for both of them. We do have a reform. But if we reform, we miss out on the collector. I don't want to miss out on the collector. Even though it's very rough taking all that damage on the big sludge. We luckily do have another reform here. Incoming damage is low enough that we can actually do that, but we will... We will have a hard time on the top floor. Spikes 2, you take 5, you will survive. We will kill the frontliner, we will take 14, 16 damage to this wave. Hmm. No. We can do better than that. If we use the top, uh, top floor anyways, we can use Big Sludge there, right? That means these guys go together on the same floor. Kill the Disciple Protector. And then later on, we just sacrifice Echo, right? That is okay. We can just sacrifice Echo, right? Except now, of course, we have a chance of bringing Echo right back instead of Draft. Maybe that's fine? If we put Echo right in the back, we actually get to kill both of them, but Big Sludge takes 16 damage instead of just taking 2. But we prevent some pile damage, so that's okay. Uh, of course, now we don't have a reform, and we can't get back to the uh, can get to the conduit redirector in the back. So let's kill this guy. Then our big sludge is actually capable of killing the forge disciple. I would really like to block some damage. Beat an echo infusion or a train steward here. Train steward blocks fifteen. It's just worth. <coughs> there is a bog fly which we can use as a blocker quite well. Don't 
There's also a draft, which will survive to the next turn if we put it on the top floor. What's left in our deck? Nothing is left in our deck. So our chances of drawing a primitive mold next hand would be... We draw 5 out of 20, there is 5 primitive molds in the deck, so the chances that we miss it, miss all of them, pretty low honestly, but still existing. I think it's a risk worth taking, also we might just be fine with this anyways, we probably are. Oh. Um, also, I just realized we might still get Echo right back, so I will just reuse the spikes here and win this guaranteed. Echo Transfer. That is pretty good when infused. I'll take one. All encasement and tombed explosive wicklash. Molten encasement gives us some defense we could very well use. Yeah. Harvest plus two plus two. Is that the essence we want in the big sludge? Or is that where we put the big sludge essence? Harvest plus 2 plus 2 and rage 5? No, plus 3 plus 3 and rage 5. Yeah, that is actually the better that way around. We don't lose the... Uh, it's cheaper to play. It will be the same size though, so we probably want to pick up uh, capacity. Although Echo Ride doesn't need to be on the harvest floor. We will need multi strike that way. We still have the that mod where I can move around the UI elements that are behind the camera screen. Uh, yeah, it should be on. Um. The, it's not I can move them around, they are just moved to a specific position. Well, if our spells are more expensive, we build around our units. It's as simple as that. We can also cost reuse some of the spells. Cost reducing uh, extract spells feels bad, man. <laughs> well, having one of one less of these floating around the deck might be very nice. Permafrost. This one is less impactful. Permafrost Soul Crushing Guild makes it really easy to get the, the boss with it. It has some other benefits. Let's take a look at the Concealed Caverns. Ooh. We just need to have it in our opening hand once and that will be really good. I'll take the gold. We don't have many shards right now. We should be able to deal. With a 35 shot at a loss. Can a bottom floor just be Big Sludge Wickless Baron? And then how do we get the first kill? Echo Transfer? That would be 25, 30 damage. That's not gonna be enough though. Hmm. Maybe can work out on the top floor.
Big Sludge will get big enough to kill stuff. Weak Class Baron needs the help. I want to have more candy over there. And Echo Ride, honestly, I don't think we can keep you alive this fight. <coughs> this weakens the Forge Disciple to a point where we can actually get two kills. Which is good. We need those kills. We also need an Echo Break next hand so we can actually kill the Disciple Foot Soldier because of the explosive that spawned on the top. I hope we don't get another explosive there. We did not. This has to be Echo Break. We can't afford to lose the Weakless Baron yet. I would like to put a draft here, but sadly there's no space. We lose this floor now. That is okay. I steal some damage here. Weaken these guys so that we get ready to harvest. Hopefully have a Neko break here. We do. Allows us to remove the backliner here. Echo Infusion helps us stabilize the health of the Wickless Baron. <coughs> we leak the Trust the Priest, which is not a problem. Doesn't deal damage to us. It's just sad to miss out on the harvest. Alright, you still die to the bomb. I guess there's nothing that r can really be done with the uh, Molten Encasement there. We can't double echo break the bomb. So we just try to heal through it. You can kill a Disciple Protector and then you can just about kill an Overcharged Apprentice with the extra 10 rage you're getting. 74 damage you will be able to do. 74 damage. You have 75 health. But you will get 5 more Rage from the uh, Weakless Baron killing the Cy Disciple Protector, so that's fine. That means we kill... Unless we are guaranteed an Echo Break next hand, we are actually very unlikely to get one. So we kill the Backliner. This is fine. Actually very good. We gain health instead of losing any. I feel like we should prepare the soul crushing gift soul crushing guilt on Daedalus. Uh, we will now lose health if we play the primitive mold on the top. We don't have to right now. We can soul crushing guilt here. That is maybe good enough. I could just gift of gratitude for 120 right now, and I think I will. It's not ideal, but it's worth it. It's good enough. Definitely echo infuse you. We probably echo break. Um, and then we soul crushing guild dead. The loss. No, that will just mean the bog fly will deal additional damage. Can we get two more candy next turn? If we... No. No, we can't. Then I guess the bog fly damage is the best I'm getting. <laughs> no, because bog fly now doesn't deal damage. Ah, stupid. But it's fine. We have all we need here. <coughs> Sacrest, Remnant Pact, Wickless Recruitment. I like the Sacrest. Get those overpriced spells out of our hand. Get a good draft instead.
Now we are planning to put the big sludge essence into the Wickless Baron. But maybe that's not what we should do. We have other options. But none of the options presented to us right now are very good. So we skip. We do get capacity because we are playing around with units a lot for good reason because our non-units are pretty bad. And for the same reason I kind of want to go for some unit upgrades right now although we could go for them next floor. Get free removals and a free artifact on the right side instead of paying for our artifact and go into the Merchant of Steel with a lot of money. There is another very good Merchant of Steel later. So yeah, that's the play. That's the play. We go to the right, get the free relic, melting spout. That makes our molten encasement die easily the first time. If we don't get endless on it though, it won't matter too much. Kinda don't want it. Echo seedling. That could be good. If we get a good consume spell. First time each battle a card we consume is played. Sacrificial Resurrection actually triggers Edge, which is something we might have to keep in mind. Oh! Oh, that is a volatile gorge. Does that change everything? It just might. <coughs> if all our spells are more expensive, why don't we make them random cost instead? Also, Fall Deloader is very good because it helps us get Harvest off the ground. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Fall Deloader here. The stewards are bad reforms. The echo breaks are actually still kind of important to get to the backline back line sometimes. Hello drippings oh, do absolutely nothing in the deck and actually can be a downside if we play them because echo right gets them back and they aren't useful. They do work on the draft. They do work on reformed units. But I really feel like we don't want them in the deck. So this is going to be my first removal. Let's get repeater 2 for the high stats, which are going to be improved. Spell shield 2, sure. Makes it a bit harder to use uh, echo breaks, but that's fine. A consumed spell. This consumes. Hmm. Interesting. If we play Big, Big Sludge and Echo Ride and then make a draft out of the other two cards, we get a draft with 30 attack. That will be 60 damage. That would actually be enough to kill the Light Harnesser and then Big Sludge. Yes! That is a good start. We don't have to take Ember Drain either. Except you don't survive. On the front. That is fine. We can put you in the back. We only get one kill that way. But Echo Ride will finish the Light Harness are off, so that's fine. We do have to play you here. And we lack damage right now. Um, no! No, we consume the train steward! Ah, that's the problem. That means we at least get the collector, I guess.
Please draft, please come to me. <laughs> we are about to lose. Echo Ride still has our back, but we're not scaling up bottom floor. And that will kill us. We can't get a kill here without a draft. That is a huge problem. Question is whether I'm on candy, probably on the bottom floor. We can't even soul crushing guilt anyone to to the back so that we can hit the light harnesser or anything. It just doesn't work. Now this next wave will be hollow to deal with. This guy will deal some extinguish damage to us. We need the draft. And the problem now becomes... Uh, we could echo infuse the draft. Why do we want the draft to hit? Probably as early as possible. We still only get one kill out of that. This is not good. Very much. Very much a problem. It's 40 damage. Yeah, we get that wave down. I wish we could soul crushing guild the top floor wave. But I feel like we just die to the boss here. That prevents quite a bit of damage. That prevents 11 damage. That is worth taking a uh, Ember Drain. And as you can see, we have no chance against the boss right now. And we have almost no options here. We can deal 199. Try to buff up Echo Right. Sacrus, we can't even play the draft this turn. Thirteen times two. Yeah, you are you are dealing some damage, my friend. I don't like that. That is good. This will block a full hit, but that doesn't change the math. Right now, first attack kills the Bogfly, second hits the Draft to 12. Next round, first hit hits the Draft, kills it, hits the Echo right to 10. If we play two Echo Infusions, we are actually fine. Somewhat fine. Oh, this fight was a nightmare. Well, can Spike unearthed remains broken memories. All of these look terrible. The Wormkin Spike, maybe not so much. Yeah, that's actually quite good, in fact. Sacred Wix Resin Removal. Resin Removal is a pretty decent card. Hmm. Sacred Wix is pretty good, too. 
Yeah, I want the Sacred Wicks. It's probably our consume spell of choice. At least for quite some time. Please give me multi strike. Thank you. That is really quite necessary. <coughs> no intrinsic here, I would have liked to see that. We put the big sludge in the Wickless Baron. And I feel like the Wickless Baron needs extra health. To start out. It kind of also needs extra damage. Is the problem. Maybe we can find a large stone. No. We can have Echo right behind him. Getting us the first kills. Graph is also gonna meddle. If we don't have endless, that is quite pointless. Oh, we might find endless. And if we have endless, that's really, really good. Speedstone, Heartstone. That might come in handy in some situations. Train Seer Worlds ruined our life last fight. Almost ruined our life for last fight. Should get them out of here. True stone is a bit hard to afford. Twin stone is very expensive to use. Um, I guess it could be good on echo transfer. It could also be good on the zero cost primitive mode. But that's a bit less exciting right now. I feel like it's not worth the shots at the moment. We will have only Divine Temples from here on out. So our remaining shards come from either dupes or the um, the spell upgrades. We can get three kills here on the bottom floor if we put a... No! They have melee weakness. If we play Sacred Wicks right now, we basically permafrost it because we'll get it back from Echo, right? Also, we can build some candy. That is nice. And now we have Wickless Baron actually dealing damage. Just a problem that we don't get to the Clip Guardian. We could Wormkin Spike to apply 12 Reap to everyone. And we'll deal a bit of damage to the Guardian. But then we miss out on the Collector. We could Wormkin Spike here for a relatively low amount just to get the Collector. And also kill the sycophant that is trying to escape. We can soul crushing guild someone to the back. But that's not enough to bring the clipped guardian in range of either of my units. Unless our place Echo Break Soul Crushing Guild. That has the downside of not getting the Collector because we can't Wonkin Spike for uh, enough. For at least one. Maybe we can Soul Crushing Guild on a later floor.
If we soul crushing guild you right now, you will be undazed once you reach the pyre, which is not ideal. We do need a candy on this floor for the collector to actually die as well. <coughs> and now we kind of need two candies on this floor. So that you die and that the Clip Guardian will actually be able to be dazed on the top floor. <sighs> it's it's all complicated. We're also not getting enough kills on the bottom floor. Is another problem. We still don't have anything to reform. We need our units. Like, all our units, including the Sacrificial Resurrection, are very far down in the deck and I don't appreciate that. I really don't like how this is going. But Molten Encasement is here to save the day. <coughs> that is a lot of damage we just took. We have to use draft on the top floor and we have to keep them alive. That is luckily not a big problem, keeping them alive. It's a pretty easy way to do that. And we should be ready for the boss. Our Wickless Baron is strong. Oh no, we are not because it's this boss. Ah! That doesn't help. That doesn't help in the slightest. You have burned out one, you will lose the Ember Drain. You will do nothing of value on the bottom floor except die, which I guess has some value. Let's see if we can do that whole thing with just reforms. Can I reform now? I can reform now. You need a little bit more... Hmm... Echo Infusion isn't really worth it. It might be worth it. It's 10 damage. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that is not the reform we needed. Oh. Do we have to set up top floor? Is that how we deal with that? Giving us more time to draw into our units? <coughs> oh 
What if we carefully use Reef to make sure this entire floor dies on the top floor? Well, the one health units will die on this floor. There is nothing I can do to prevent that. What if we used Reap to get to the Clip Guardian instead? Can do Primitive Mold, Sacred Wicks, Echo Break to kill the Collector. But then I have no energy left for the Wormkin Spike. I think instead we generate one candy here. We generate one candy here. We spend one more energy. We don't have to, but... We might want to. Right? Do we want a train steward available for reforms? I don't think so. Um, sacred wicks and a wormkin spike for one. Apply four reap, so these guys will die on the top floor. We get at least two harvest triggers out of this wave. We also get a lot of damage taken out of... No, 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 no. They are dazed. They are fine. We are fine here. This wave? Hmm. Next problem. What's left in the deck? A single, simple draft would be great. I think we start buffing up you. Even if it reduces our candy availability. And I feel like we kill one of these one health guys. We're unlikely to get the kill on all of them. We make sure candy is available on as many floors as possible. Especially on the ones where it matters the most. And here we have options now. Echo Riot will deal enough damage to the backliner to actually get the kill there. So this gives us a lot of power. A lot of harvest triggers. We need to prepare some bottom floor that can tank the Crystal Cloak for a bit and reduce their stealth so we can receive them on the top floor pretty easily. Uh, we get four harvest triggers that's gonna be plus 12 and 20 range so plus 32 we lose one rage plus 30 so we'll deal 87 times 2 which is enough to kill the clip defender but we won't get to these sycophants, which might be okay. We just need a draft. No, we use Wormkin Spike. A draft would die because they don't have stealth. But a Wormkin Spike for a simple one cost, for simple simply one energy will do the job. We do have enough power to bust through these guys, so we can probably deal with this next wave decently well. Does that mean we play primitive mold, get back the stealth tomb again? And then follow that up with a spike. That is probably the play here. Everything dies, that is six harvest triggers, which which is huge. <laughs> and we even get another Wormkin Spike for this wave, so we can guarantee harvest them all as well. A stealth might have to go here. A 
That gives us 16 health. You will die in one combat, so we get stealth 2 on you. Gives us a lot of stealth removal, actually. Kills the ads as well. Can generate another candy on any floor. And then play the Wellkin Spike on the top. <coughs> Think we use Sacred Wicks. Getting back this molten encasement. Play any unit in front of it. That will take another 3 stealth from you. The Bogfly will die on the top floor, giving us a harvest trick on it. We should be more than fine here. If we put the uh, train steward all the way in the back, we will actually remove all the stealth, right? And then we win on the top floor. No problems whatsoever. Done Echo? Sure. More infused cards? I feel like none of these are really what we want. Soul Crushing Gill can be useful. <laughs> Metamoria Forecast. Remnant Host. What is your essence, Remnant Host? Extinguish Summon 2 Draft Units. We could make a Molten Encasement Remnant Host combination just so we can get more harvests out of our Baron are we looking for unit upgrades at this point still endless would be good removals are good Hursles hold is good I'll take a cleansing water, gladly. Large stone is not that helpful. Weak stone, no. No, I think we're just looking for endless at the moment. It's also time to remove these train stewards. At least... At least both of them. <laughs> Another value stone. We could make another card better. That should be the Wormkin Spike. <coughs> and I think we make the fusion. There are certain things we need to consider with this unit now. The fact that if it dies to burnout, it will leave the drafts for the next wave. Which is c definitely a downside. But I think it's one we can work around. I think this is a pretty easy bottom floor setup. We don't want to deal with the. I will generate a candy on the top floor as well. Just in case. We don't want to deal with the Ember Drain if we don't have to. We just kill you and everything is fine. Keep buffing. We will need all the health we can get. And now we have access to our units. 
This is very nice. Let these guys kill the frontliner and then Draft cleans up the back. Sure. You can be on the second floor. Standing by. We don't want to kill the sycophant with an echo break. That would increase the damage we take. Uh, we don't have anything consumed yet. But I think we want to potentially wait. For a... Uh, what's the car call? Spike? Wormkin Spike? Bottom floor has a Dark Shout now. That is not a problem. We don't need to cast any spells on there right now. Although an Echo Infusion would be nice. Maybe we just cast a Sacrus and put a Draft here. That hardly matters though. I think what we instead do is we buff up the Wickless Baron and then cast the Sacrus just to consume these cards. Keep the draft around though. Although we will get them back with Echo right anyway, so uh, maybe wasn't that useful, but still. Just in case a strong backliner appears. And then I think... I think we do want to build up some candy. We could just apply a reap to a uh, Arcus. Uh, but that doesn't do a whole lot if we don't have candy on this floor. Uh, this is good. You die to non-burnout. That's 24 reap right there. This is pretty reasonable amount. Definitely mold. It's a draft. It's fine. We can get a harvest trigger out of the draft as well. Health goes on this guy. I will replenish my candy on this floor and just. Yeah, we increase the cost of Soul Crushing Guild. I don't care. The extra reap on Arcus is not that important, but it is nice to have. There is a blinding dark shot right now. Maybe we don't reform this turn at all. Instead, we just spike. And then we don't have to reform, but I still want to. And we win against Arcus. Wormkin Etching Symphony of the Soul Intent on Death. Intent on Death has a pretty hefty effect on this Remnant Host. But it's not really an effect I want. Symphony of the Soul will double Rage and Stealth on the Wickless Baron. Chances against Divinity? Hmm. Not great. Not, not great to be honest. I have an idea how I can improve on that. But it doesn't make me happy. But I think... I think I just might have to go down the path that will give me an option to beat Divinity. I don't think Symphony of the Soul is part of that path. Nor is Wormkin Actions. Nor is Intent on Death. And I think we have to take a second Light of the Seraph. We need to be able to fit two Wickless Barons on the same floor. And have space for a sacrificial unit as well. 
That is not great, but I feel like that's what we have to do in order to win this run. We also need to dupe the Baron. We could either dupe now, get two removals, or we could dupe here. No, we could dupe now, get a cavern and some pyro health, or dupe here and get a merchant of magic and forgotten boons, but we do get the removals on wherever we don't dupe. The merchant of steel is pretty useless to us, so let's dupe in the next space. Hmm. This might seem weird, but I think we go Marsh Lord. Because Echo Ride is gonna be on their own floor. And they will need to contribute. And the Bog Chrysalis will help with that. Just a little bit. But I think more than the slight extra stats. I think it is Marsh Lord here. <laughs> Saw you crazy, but that's what I like about you. Thanks. <laughs> I like being likable crazy. This is only good if we actually spend actual energy on it, which we sometimes do. This is much better. <coughs> Sacred Wix needs to be zero cost. Uh, we should also look at the temple. Extreme Stone. That is pretty much useless. Perch Stone is not worth it. We perch our cards other ways. I think we want to get rid of Echo Breaks now. They are just not good enough. Power stone we don't care about. This ember stone goes on a very specific card as well. And that is the sacrificial resurrection. We could put another search stone in echo break and have one less that we need to remove. That might be good. Permafrost also offers some utility on Sacrass or on Sacred Wix. <coughs> I think whatever we do, we purge another Echo Break. And I think we also upgrade one with another plus 20 and consume. The plus 20s are useful. Do we permafrost? I don't think so. I think we buy another perch and this one goes on an expensive primitive mold. And then we move on. We wanna slim down our deck. Not, uh, not that much. We don't buy a perch stone to do it. Heaven seal. Sure. Now the problem with Marsh Lord right now is that we actually don't have... No, we do have space for the egg. That's actually not a problem. This is Echo Transfer. We can use that on a Wickless Baron. How do we get to the Gilded Wing? Set up on the top floor? That is a possibility. There is another option. Well, we're slightly short on damage though. How much damage do you do if all these three guys and an egg dies? Will the egg die though? 10, 5, 5? No. The egg will survive with 1 HP. 
Um, so if these three die, that's three harvest triggers, three harvest triggers, each being 13 attack. That means 39 attack for you, that means you will deal 44. Echo Ride will deal 170 to this Gilded Wing, but that's not enough and it will just heal back up. We have to set up on the top floor. That means we put Big Sludge in front. Well, Wickless, Baron, Sludge. We do need some more candy to play all these cards out. Uh, we need Echo Transfer. I think that goes on the egg actually. We just need one Harvest Trigger on you. And things will be okay. Once the egg hatches, it will take more capacity though. Uh, that is something I should have considered. Maybe the egg should have been in front. That is the one harvest trigger we need. Oh! Echo Right gets the plus 50% attack. We could have set up on the bottom floor then. Do I like that better? I am not sure. There are pros and cons to that. I'm just gonna consume these for candy. I will not play the Zacrass here. With these drafts, with the bog flies, yeah, we have everything we need to take down uh, this wave. And from here on out, we should be growing at a good enough pace to be able to take down everything that comes after us. We will need some candy on the top floor still. We can soften up other floors with things like this. That doesn't soften them up. It actually makes them stronger. That is not a problem though. My uh, Wickless Baron will be very strong. Yeah, that is fine. Let's keep candy up on the top floor. We do kill everything here, but we also take quite a lot of damage. More than I really want to. Well, these backliners are both infused. Can take them out individually. That is a bit of a problem. I have an idea. That is still gonna be enough to take out the entire floor. And then we can go back to using these things and have stealth on the top floor. Hmm, I shouldn't play these other units. I don't need to play Wormkin Spike. I don't want to play it right now. Getting a Sacred Bwix back every turn is really good. We might need some help here. Is this enough help? That is not enough help. What if draft? If we kill this guy, then play a draft in front. We could also just put a molten encasement in front. That gives us... 
Whew. Molten encasement in front. Kill this guy. The units kill the molten encasement. Gives us drafts who kill the will weighing a statue to it. That is not enough. Why is it not enough? Now it is. Okay. The new boss is mostly wave management, but the wave management is pretty tough. The boss itself, not a huge problem. But managing them waves can be very hard. <laughs> Here, the big guy is in front, so things are much, much easier this time around. We have enough damage to deal with them, even if they get a harvest trigger from the Dark Wings. Now we do not anymore. Oh, you don't just give one harvest trigger, you give multiple. Uh, slight mistake, but we can live with that. <laughs> and I think this boss should be no problem whatsoever. Yep. None. Forgotten trade is tempting. I think that's good. Subsuming blade, mortal entrapment. No, it's too late for those. Crushing demise could be good, but not really that amazing. Fate first blade, combustible wax. None of these really matter for our strategy. Karuska does. Karuska is huge. I think we also buy precious plating. Might as well double stack the Wonkin spike, right? I could buy removals instead. We definitely dupe uh, the Baron. Twin stone, true stone. The twin stone on the Welkin spike is kind of interesting. But we don't really rely on that too much. I don't want to rely on it too much. Cards that can be cut. Primitive mold. Definitely want to cut one. These will occasionally come back from our consume pile, so it might be worth cost reducing them.
Breakcoin infusion doesn't really need the cost reduction anymore. We have Koruska now. I'm gonna go with this. And the final upgrade... Does that even matter? Let's go with this. I don't think I want to have any more shards than we already have. We move on to Seraph. I don't think Seraph will be a problem. Killing this first wave is a little bit of an issue. I think we use Echo, right, for help there. And we might want to have Echo right in front this time. Because these guys start with zero damage. It's a little bit of an issue. Once we start getting stealth, that won't be a huge problem. No way to prevent taking that damage there unless we set up on the bottom uh, top floor or anything like that, so... Mhm. Mm I see the problem there. We need the candy so we can play Echo Transfer. That triggers Karuska. We can play Soul Crushing Guild here. That's an issue. That is a big issue. Can we not set up on the bottom floor at all here? Is that just my mistake? Maybe. There is a lot of incoming damage and once we need a bit to get stealth online. <coughs> there is stealth. Does Echo right back? Echo's on the top. Starting to get harvest triggers here. Still not enough to get the kill on the Dark Wings. Fine. Two units available, huh? What if we just bulk fly where can spike to the top floor? Everything would die on our side, everything but the Gilded Wing would die on their side. I could even echo break to make it everything on their side would die. Or we could just Fill this top floor. The Wonkin Spike. I think we just fill this top floor with trash. <coughs> Two candy, so this needs to apply eight reap. Yeah, eight reap is fine. We do want to get this kill. 
and apply eight reap to everyone at the top floor. There's our first turn without reform. Slight problem. Echo Right dies, but that's fine. He would die to burnout anyways. We need to get rid of that guy. This will give us an ember back. This will give us another ember back. And we could soul crushing guilt you. That gets us two harvests here on the bottom floor. <coughs> this is a very weird one. Finally another tomb. Do we use you as a blocker? Yes, we do, because you die to burnout. Top floor is almost looking fine. Simple echo break would do it. Let's see what we get from reform. Also, I might want a forgotten trade so we can reform twice this turn. That goes on the bottom floor still. We take you out, we reform on the top. An echo right, that will certainly help a ton. And here I thought Seraph wouldn't be a big problem. I mean... It's not a giant problem, but it's definitely... A little tricky. There we go. That solves that problem. Luckily our deck is very flexible and can do insane stuff with the power of reform. Like reforming that Marsh Lord, getting us new eggs, or jump lock. It's powerful, very powerful. Oh, this is perfect. We get a Wormkin Spike to take out the bottom floor. Getting all the harvest we need on the Wickless Baron. To get started. Echo Wright wants to be on the second floor. Uh, how much reap do we need? Depends on how many candies we have. 80 reap is definitely more than is necessary. I think we are better off applying more candies and going with a slightly lower reap number. If we play both of these, we still get uh, 7 times 8, 56 reap, but with 3 candy, which is just straight up better. We could also use the candy on this floor instead, it's trying to get that egg to hatch. That is less important. Uh, I might not play the echo break, actually. So we get the Wormkin Spike back next turn for the next wave. Oh, right, that's a thing. I guess we just use that for extra damage on the Divinity. That 
There is the other big sludge. Weakless Baron. Whatever you're called. Now Weakless Baron just dies right now. That is a bit concerning. But death is not the end for us. We do wield the power of reform. And it's a very... Very good power to have. <coughs> I would like to keep Echo right alive. This certainly happens. I feel like this also happens. I think we need you here right now. We have Koruska, so we can play this without any cost. I reap, get another kill here. <coughs> Maybe we have to split the stealth. Maybe Echo Right needs stealth as well. You are dealing a lot of damage, but not quite enough to get to the disciple get the disciple this inquisitor down. But yeah, we just can't get that kind of damage. If we want to kill this wave, I think we need a giant Wormkin Spike. Maybe not this giant. Definitely not this giant. But... You have Trample. Does that ever matter to us? How do we deal with Mr. Inquisitor here? Let us see what we can do. 32 reap, that's gonna be with, let's say, 5. 5 echoes. 150 that's not even close if we daze you when you go to the pyre you'll still kill our pyre uh, we basically needed the weakless baron the other one we can still get the weakless baron on the top floor that's not gonna be enough his stats are not large enough Yeah, I feel like we can't leak this Inquisitor. Uh, the start is okay, but we kinda need... We kinda need the other Wickless Baron to be surviving stuff 
Maybe what we do is set up these guys on the top floor. Get us time to find stealth. And just do it that way. We can still play a giant Wormkin spike here. Bye, Chris. Good luck. We can still play a giant Wormkin spike here if we don't generate any candy on the floors we don't want it on. Echo Ride will die pretty soon. Not to this wave, but to a later one. This should actually go on the top right. The sweep here is slightly scary. Of course, I should have played the draft first. I hope the Ember Drain is not gonna be a big problem. This is fine. We get these guys reaped as well. Now we have access to stealth. So these guys are gonna get strong. Everything here is gonna die, so that's gonna be a lot of harvest. What is available for reform? It's a draft. We might just have to reform that and keep it in hand. So it's not in our reform pool anymore. Uh, let's echo infuse the frontliner. Stealth will no longer be a problem. Do we need more reap on these guys? All the weak ones are gonna die anyways. But it helps with the stronger ones. Reap on these guys helps with the Conduit Redirector and the Wildwings. Hmm. This won't actually kill anyone. And I keep the draft in the deck. I will need to be able to reform uh, the encasement consistently. We can't guarantee it here. We do get this wave down, which is huge. We lose harvests if we kill units there, and we might need all the harvests we can get to get to the Disciple Inquisitor. Let me think about this. <coughs> <coughs> we do get all the harvests here, but we also take some damage to the Wildwings. Um, we will also waste a hit on the Wildwings, but with 4 harvests this turn, most likely 5. Even a bog fly will give us one more. Maybe even more than that. We don't need candy here. Yeah, let's see. Echo right, okay. Yeah, I think we use Echo right to kill the overcharged apprentice. So we can focus our whole damage on the Disciple Inquisitor there. We do extract here. Bogfly just for some damage on the Inquisitor. It doesn't really matter, but it also doesn't hurt in any way. At least not right now. I don't want to consume the Echo Break. I think I will hold. 
Uh, maybe I should have gotten the Echo Fly for a Harvest Trigger. But I feel like we have enough power on the top floor right now. Uh, of course not if they c this guy dies, but we can prevent that very easily. With a simple sacred, sacred Wix. Which will give us back the tomb. Backliners don't die right now. Right, they gain a bunch of armor from the overcharged tanks, harvest triggers. That surprisingly didn't help. Why did this not help? You are still not able to one-shot the overcharge tank. Dazed 6. That made things even worse. Ah. We need the we need the one harvest trigger we missed. That's all we need. <sighs> we need every harvest trigger we can get. Again, should have played the draft first. It should not matter. We get all the harvest triggers we can here. We still want to... Get one candy here. One can spike on the bottom. We do use the box fly on the top floor, getting us a harvest trigger, very important. And we need you to be strong enough to kill overcharge tanks in one shot. And I think we take out the weakling in the front. <coughs> and now we actually do have the power to deal with this guy a uh, wave. Although Sacred Wix will Actually, ah, uh, the bog fly died this time around. I'm okay with that. We can, we can survive. Can survive on the top floor for a moment. What happens if we sacrifice a bog fly? Nothing should happen because it dies to burnout, and it prevents a lot of damage to our uh, barons. Which Baron do we buff? Usually the tanks are in the front, so we buff the front. 290, we should be ready to deal with that. We have enough damage to deal with the Disciple Inquisitor. 
things are looking good in that regard. Echo right here. Just to keep giving us reform spells. Not reform, consume spells. Well, some of the consume spells are reform spells. <coughs> Finally, we got another mold encasement. Let's keep your health up. Silent Marksman in the back. We will gain 1, 2, 3, 4 harvest triggers. So you should gain about 50 attack. 50 attack will be enough to one shot the Gilded Wings so the backliner can deal with the Silent Marksman. And that means we will have enough damage to deal with that wave. This wave on the other hand looks very scary. <laughs> That's a lot of health. We basically need to one shot everyone and have reap for the backliner. So we probably should weaken them with some reap. Do we need to reform anything? What's... Yeah, we need to reform that bog fly. It's not supposed to be in the deck. Uh, in the reform pile. Because now we can guaranteed reform uh, the unit we really want. These guys get weakened. This guy shouldn't be a problem. We will be easily strong enough by the point he shows up to the top floor to take him out. We also cleansed his spikes, which is nice. These both need to be healthy. I think it's also time we start dazing the divinity just for the endless phase of the fight uh, relentless phase of the fight do we still want echo back i think so uh sure I didn't think that was quite enough damage to kill the Echo Ride and the Egg, but with the Triple Striker in the back, it is, definitely. We got another Tomb. This wave is no problem. We make sure both of you stay healthy and powerful. And we are almost at Relentless. We don't have to worry about this wave anymore. We only have to deal with this wave. And then Relentless will kick in for this next one. Uh, we can put a Bog Fly on the top and let it die. Or a Draft for that matter. Draft is probably better to get the Reform stacks up. We can even... Kill both. Get more reform stacks that way. And here we enter Relentless and that should win us the run. There we go. That worked out quite nicely. It was certainly one of the tougher challenges. The every spell costs one more modifier is brutal. And we didn't benefit too much from the stack gains on our champion. If we had something like Trample Penumbra, 
things would have gone much, much smoother. At least I assume. But we would also need some scaling on that to deal with the um, last divinity, of course. Because the waves there have easily 700 health. So even a buffed up trample penumbra won't quite reach these values. Let's take a look at the run summary. We got some divine masteries for the melting remnant finally. Or some more. I don't know. <laughs> um, and yeah, that is another export challenge clear up from the list. This is certainly one of the more difficult ones around. But these Wickless Barons with infused with big sludges were quite solid. I wonder if maybe a different unit would have been a better choice. One that doesn't rely on harvest to scale. But we had the tools to get the first kills and get them going, so things were okay. Uh, in the end, the Wormkin Spike was a big enabler for exactly that, getting the first kills, together with Fall Deloader sometimes. And Echo Ride. Echo Ride's big attack value, thanks to Mark of a Champion, was also pretty helpful there. But I was glad we could found a more unit based deck to partially circumvent the arduous Arcana Mutator.